Phil. Hey there. Hey. hey. Good morning. Uh, morning good afternoon. Morning. <laughs> yes. So, uh, Phil, uh, uh, over to you. You can start sharing your screen. Um, I'll hang on till then. Uh, Great. Yeah. Thanks, Prasanth. And you're seeing my screen now. You can go. For, uh, yep. Yes, you can. Yep. Just remember, yeah. Yep. Right. You're good. Perfect. Thanks, Prasanth. Yeah, I would. So, thanks. Good morning. Uh, Phil Scanlon from Solace. And today I'm going to spend the next sort of 20 minutes talking about event driven APIs. Um, so we cover four main areas. Uh, just a bit of a you know, background about why 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 events, um, where they fit, um, where they fit with APIs. Uh, a little bit about how they sit with service mesh and event mesh, similar terms, but solving similar uh, different purposes. Um, then a little bit about you know how you know some of the things that we see um, with people are looking at event mesh type solutions and the kinds of things they need. Um, we use uh, Schrodinger's cat as an as a analogy to uh, to talk about how you know how how do you look inside the box? How do you see what's going on inside of um, you know something that's powering you know, huge volumes, huge huge amount of data without affecting it? Um, that was you know Schrodinger's experiment with the the cat in the box. Um, and then you know why do we care? Why do why do we want to do this? Um, so first, looking at this, so you know, wh why are people doing things in real time? Um, you know, the, the move towards real time um, has become incredibly um, uh, popular in the last sort of three to three years, three to five years. Um, part of that really is, is uh, you know, businesses. So an example of a business like HP, um, their business obviously, you know, traditionally in their print business was was building printers, selling them retail. Um, but they're realizing more and more that uh, you know people don't want to buy printers. They don't want to maintain spares. They don't want to have to keep um, paper on standby. They'd really like to outsource all of that. Um, you know, it's, it sounds simple in uh, in uh, principle, um, but you know when you when you look at the business of how do you do that, there's a, a lot of events, there's a lot of um, interactivity, but it's also very real time. You know, so um, if someone's maintaining their own printers. Um, they can, you know, they have stock on hand. If someone else is maintaining it and they're printing something, then they expect a very quick um, call out. So monitoring, uh, but as well as you know, customer interaction, scheduling, all of those things. Uh, when you're running a business which requires huge amounts of customer interaction, is a very different solution. So you know that that need for real time, that need for things as a service, uh, puts a lot of pressure on um, on systems. Um, and if you look at real time digital transformation, other people doing different things, um, you know, really the, the you know, data has uh, value and it's more valuable um, in time. Uh, where, where Solace sort of started, we started with the you know, stock exchanges, foreign exchange, um, where time was money. And it was very important. You know, the quicker you could react to changes in the market, react to things, the more money um, you could make for your brokers, for your clients. Um, you know, fast forward you know, 15, 20 years, um, there is a lot more value in real time across a lot more industries. Um, so you know, even, even you know, traditional manufacturing companies that would be very, very you know, process driven and um, are, are monitoring more. They're using IoT. They're doing more real-time, uh, more time, real-time build, real-time um, you know, um, changes. That obviously, you know, the value of that information is more valuable. So what we're seeing is, you know, to to to, to harness the power of that, people are bringing in event-based systems like uh, event brokers and using event streaming or event stream processing to solve um, challenges. Um, if we look at where you know where um, as traditionally you know this this area between different applications and people is called middleware, um, a, a key component of middleware is integration. Um, this is where you know you look at things like event brokers; they they sit inside of that layer. So you know in in, in two thousand, um, you know the world was predominantly using MQ series, um, very point to point. So a producer of information would know where that information would have to go to, so it would send it to a queue. That queue was for consumption by a, a specific consumer, so very, very point to point. Um, move forwards to you know 2010s, uh, where enterprise service bus SOA, um, the uh, producer needs to know the endpoint for the feature. Um, but not for the consumer. So you may, you know, there's some abstraction, there's some um, taking away. So, you know, piece of information may go to consumer, um, but it's still, you know, very coarse grain. So the functionality, the agility, the ability to change is, is, is minimal. Um, if you look at now in, in 2020 um, and solving things with an event-driven architecture, um, this is very much um, complete decoupling. So the producers of information 
don't know where that information is going to be consumed. Um, and that's that's fantastic for agility. Um, it's fantastic for you know changing and adding things later on. Um, it has some you know some some downsides, some some compromises, some some things you need to worry about, um, such as knowing you know <laughs> who is listening to my data. Are they allowed to look at the data? Um, where are they? Are they geographically distributed? Are they keeping up? Are they online, offline? So so that broker's functionality is is critical in that architecture. Um, but you also have very fine grained so you can you have something called a, a topic. Um, hierarchy a topic model so you know you can have publishers publishing information um, decoupled describing that information but your consumers can you know kind of can aggregate or can can, act, can get data from many many different producers without having to create these one-to-one -one models okay so um, event driven is driving this new imperative we're moving away from batch polling um, into more streaming so we're still you know, running over data sets, um, looking, moving away from longer time, so, you know, daily, hourly runs more towards real time. And real real time can be, you know, minutes, seconds, milliseconds, it, you know, can be whatever it means for that criticality. Um, you know, anything to do with user interaction. If you think about a user clicking on a website, you know, less than a half a second is, is, no, is uh, not really noticeable transition times. But more than that, people start to sort of sit and, and realize. So if you're building uh, customer experience applications, you need to really make sure that interactivity um, is different. And we're seeing more people move that interaction at the, at the front towards real time. Um, but, you know, we, we also have to, to uh, understand that, you know, the systems behind all of this um, are not necessarily real time. They're not necessarily able to, to respond at the, the scale and volume of the number of um, users kind of Requesting those systems, so therefore, you know, we need to look at what we can do in the middle, and we'll cover some use cases on. Um, I, I think also we're, we're sort of seeing people now when they're looking at building new systems, rather than looking at, you know, do I really need real time? They're looking at why why would I not need real time? Maybe there's something I don't know about next year that means, um, you know, having that decoupled system, having that agility, having that performance will mean that you know my business isn't isn't constrained. Um, so especially in sort of innovation areas, we're seeing a lot of people who are really you know understanding the value of that um, for future. Um, the other piece is, you know, obviously looking at um, adopting this kind of technology. Um, you know, traditionally, people would sort of look, how can I do something without really, you know, affecting too much? Um, with with with, with real time, with event driven, you're really looking at, um, you know, how can I prove that this really works where it really matters? So in that, um, you know, in that high visibility area, it doesn't need to be, um, you know, absolutely business critical. It could be, you know, providing a, a new rollout of a new app. For doing customer interaction, you don't have to roll that out to everyone, but you really want to prove that it can scale. Really prove that it can it can work with that um, in that that manner. So, looking moving forwards, you know, looking at um, uh, how this may compare to something like um, SOA. So, looking at a traditional order management. Um, when we look at you know what's an API, what's um, what's an event. Um, we may have this, you know, the top half of this, which is a you know sequence of things that have to happen. So we validate an order, we do a microservice to make sure microservice to make sure one's got credit, make sure there's inventory, we process the payment, and then we process the order. Um, on the back of that, there may be things that are interesting in understanding. So cross sell up sell. Um, you know, as people are doing things on the website, is there an opportunity to sell them more um, to to introduce new things to them? Um, am I going to move every click across into a into a uh, into a data lake, and do I want to run some some AI and ML? Um, so we have the concept of what we call north south and east west. So my APIs, my traditional APIs, are very much north south. Um, it's very much you know do something, um, invoke something, get access to data, um, you know do that. But off the back of that, there are a lot of other um, applications inside of an organization that can leverage or piggyback off that that event happening. Um, and so when we look at um, you know, that sync and async, we talk about the synchronous part, which needs to be fast. Um, and then the asynchronous path that can also be fast, but it's if it's running slow, it's not going to impact that synchronous fast path. And that kind of you know, multi-pace capability is very important when you're looking to leverage things that are going on without impacting the things that are happening. Um, the, the other piece as well, so, you know, so looking at you know, when we're, we're decomposing things into microservices, um, if we've taken that approach, we've got our application calling our API gateway. Um, our API gateway is a RESTful API. Um, my event broker can listen for, for an event for a RESTful API. It can then respond back to that. 
um, but then it can also take those other um, feeds of data. So mixing, you know, so sort of synchronous and asynchronous, mixing request response with pub sub um, is what an event broker can do. So looking very, you know, very high level at the Solus event broker, um, it's essentially a multi-protocol event broker that sits at the core of a number of protocols. Um, those protocols um, predominantly are open standards based. Um, so much like with REST, um, SOAP, uh, sorry, um, HTTP uh, made REST very, very um, uh, decoupled from any vendor, very uh, flexible to be used anywhere uh, by anyone, uh, very easily shared. Um, AMQP and MQTT are similar standards in the uh, in the uh, synchronous world that allow us to do that. Um, where Solus sort of um, comes in is that it can speak REST as well as AMQP as well as MQTT. So my different participants in my my event exchange and my synchronous uh, exchange don't all necessarily have to run the same protocol, um, and that gives me agility. So once I've built something. Um, I can leave it running um, if my new, um, you know, so if I build a service that works internally using AMQP, but I want to then leverage it externally via my API gateway and REST, I can do that. Um, but if I've also, you know, got some some other processes that are um, sitting off the back of those events, I may use something like a Boomi with a native Solus connector. Um, I may push that information across to, you know, cloud native services like SQS, SNS, um, and natively stream those across. So when, when I talk about natively, it means no code. It means just configuration to say where information is flowing. So, you know, that agility of having multi-protocol, being able to stream information that's maybe solving one use case but is useful in another is, is where the event broker from Solus fits in. Okay, um, so looking at, um, at, at the, another another area we've seen this. So if you look at you know traditional approaches to doing this kind of middleware behind the API, um, SOA um, was was a common solution. Um, the challenge with SOA is as that scaled, as we had more people using it, as we though later on wanted to change something that had already been been built, um, that S, the ESB became the bottleneck. Um, Although it was quick to put things in the first place, it was slow to change because there are multiple parties that may be, may be interested in the, in the information. Um, so looking at event-driven, the actual movement of events is still, still required. So what we used to sort of see as messaging is now our event mesh, our event platform. Um, but our ESB capabilities move to the edge. So I still have that transformation capability. I still have the ability to do orchestration and adapters. Um, but they sit alongside and, and often happen after the fact rather than controlling it. So I'm no longer orchestrating a process that sits behind an API. Um, I have events that are self-choreographing. -chore um, and what that means is um, rather than having, say, a multi-step, multi-system process to kind of you know, work out whether my order is OK, um, I can change that to a validation service so my validation service can work very quickly so i get my responsive responsive note at the front end i can accept that order i can say it's valid um, i can then do all of my other um, steps of my order processing decoupled you know via subscriptions to to um to to events um, and when that's finally you know kind of um, settled i may send a message back to you know the calling application of you know your order's now been processed and it's been dispatched so rather than having to lump that all together into one big monolithic service i can break it down into two microservices um, with those being event-based as well, I get the persistence, I get the decoupling. So if some events are running slow, um, that doesn't slow down everything else. Okay. Um, another key concept we we sort of use is when we're talking event-driven is um, having uh, routable topics. And um, what that basically means is, uh, you know, when an event happens, um, I tag the event with a topic. Um, now that topic is, you can think of it more like, rather than a string or a single piece of text, you can think about it as a set of tags that describe the, the event in more and more granular things. Um, now one of the great things about the Solus Event Broker is you don't need to predefine these, these topics. Okay, so you know, they, they just you know, think of them as tags on the event. So my subscribers, when they want to listen to, you know, say, um, you know, if I'm talking about payments and my publisher it, uh, sends a payment, um, I may have a service that's interested in all 
um, transactions that happen in Singapore, not just payments, but you know, tra balance transfers, debits, uh, credits, all sorts of things. Um, I may also have a second service that's interested in just, um, you know, just a payment. Um, so I can change and mix and match these subscribers after the fact. And they use what are called um, selectors to pick what topics they're interested in um, and which events they're interested in. So it gives me that real level of agility. Okay, so um, just just looking briefly at that with the um, you know the service example. So uh, looking basically, here's my microservice. Um, I'm using REST for my public microservice um, that has a URL. Um, my URL from a REST um, transmit, transmits to a, a topic for JMS. So when a message is sent from the producer, that gets routed to the microservice. Okay. Um, I get reuse, so I may have a second system that now wants to use that, you know, very similar to SOA. What I also get with um, the event broker is um, I can add in these second listeners. So I may have a campaign analytics microservice that's listening for uh, messages on a specific topic. Um, I don't change any of my um, initial um, my initial flow, that stays the same. Um, if my um, campaign analytics is running slower as offline, that doesn't matter because these things are decoupled. Okay. Um, so when that message comes in, the broker takes care of feeding that information to those two services. Um, my API platform, you know, we often say, is it, a, is it an API platform or an event broker? Um, we need both. The API platform does things like hold the public repository. It deals with the, uh, you know, the event, uh, the, the uh, REST gateway to be able to publish these things. Um, and the um, you know the events are more about the you know the decoupled the the east west within the organization. Okay, so um, along the same lines as you know where does this fit with service mesh? Um, so the service mesh you know has you know is is more closely aligned to SOA. Uh, obviously works at a much higher throughput. Um, however, um, as those services you know when they first came out they were very tightly coupled. Um, so. When you know, we sort of really do we need to change some of that, we need a little bit of decoupling. We had sidecars and we had service mesh. Um, however, um, not all services need to be serially coupled. So you know, with a service mesh, you have serialization. Um, there's a dependency between you know, um, these things happening. Um, so sometimes I need some persistence. Sometimes I need to decouple things you know, within seconds, minutes, hours, days. Um, so we have um, you know, a set of use cases that are very closely um, or very well deployed in in the event mesh rather than service mesh, um, and so so in, in in consequence and in you know and if you look at the, the analysts they say these two things work very well together. Um, service mesh and event mesh they go very well alongside, um, much like API gateways and um, the the Solis um, event portal. Um, they they both solve similar problems. Um, so looking to this event portal. So when we started we were talking around you know Schrodinger's cat. So you know. The cat is inside the box, um, but if I open the box, then I, I break, the, the cat dies. Um, so how can I look inside the box without killing the cat? So you know, if I look at events and you know, if I talked about this decoupled mesh and lots of things going on, if, if, you know, traditionally if I you know, put in, looked inside the box, added things like um, you know, kind of um, logging events, if I looked at that, that would slow down my, my box. Right? So it would you know, eventually kill it. So, what Solus have done is obviously we have um, you know, our event broker and we have isolation between consumers. Um, so because of that, um, we're able to also you know, help you map out what does the box do. So you know, rather than your traditional kind of middleware components that are you know, closed boxes, black boxes, um, we have the event portal that allows us to sort of see what's going on inside the box. So that means um, we can do things like event discovery. So we can actually have a probe that looks at what's running across the event mesh, what's going on. Um, we have the ability to create you know, from an event designer. So I'm building an event-based system. What are all the components? How do they fit together? Um, how can I, um, you know, what, what are my systems? E even through to things like code generation. So if I've defined some systems that are going to interact, um, how, do they, how do they talk to each other? Um, so we have the PubSub Plus event portal. Um, and that can help you uh, look at look at uh, you know designing event based systems. So um, as a, a I could probably spend another sort of five, 10, 15 minutes talking about event portal, uh, but uh, I know we need to leave some time for questions and answers. Um, so so uh, you know I'd encourage you to to kind of go and look at 
um, the Solus event portal and understand how you know the event portal can help you on your event driven journey um, and help you start becoming event driven um, and looking at things like you know the the um, you know the design model. Um, the catalog, which tells you what events are going on, and the the visualization. And um, we've also added visualization for other event-based systems like Kafka. So if you've written stream processing applications in Kafka, you can pull that information into the event portal and visualize uh, what the Kafka application has done, what are all the topics it's using. Okay. So in summary, um, uh, so in summary, uh, you know, Quick little bit about Sol Solus. Uh, we provide a, a free broker if you want to use our, our broker for free. We provide a free trial of our, our portal. Um, uh, we, we have been around for, for quite a number of years, sort of 15 plus years. We solved some of the earliest and hardest um, event-based um, uh, systems um, in our early years. And now as we're seeing that um, you know, kind of go broader to, to many different markets, um, you know, we, we're helping our technology being adopted into to a much broader set of uh, customers. Um, so summarizing the talk, um, talk a little bit about APIs, uh, you know, why we need real time, what are events, um, the parallels between the SOA ESB service mesh world and the event driven world, um, how the event portal can help us kind of build and design these systems. Um, and also then, you know, in summary, why, why should we bother? Well, you know, as we're building more and more responsive systems, we need um, events to be able to power that. We need that agility. We need that customer experience. Uh, but also, if you've got a legacy um, environment, then having um, you know the Solus event broker to be able to decouple uh, what you're doing in the new world from your legacy world um, that allows us to, to move towards modernization, to move into um, you know kind of building um, event-centric applications that still interact with my legacy. Okay, so thank you very much for, for being part of uh, this session. Uh, now open it up for question and answer. Uh, thanks, Phil, for that uh, wonderful session. Uh, we haven't received any questions from the audience yet, uh, but I do have one uh, for you. Yep. So, uh, in a, uh, so from your interaction with the customers, uh, different industries across the globe everything so uh, how much of uh, you know uh, how much of uh, organizations have uh, taken up the event driven apis uh, from an ideal stage of where they should be adopting say out of 100 how much you say have adopted there yeah so so i mean um events as apis um i, I think the, the main thing we're sort of seeing there is you know um with, with when you when the only thing you've got is a hammer, um, you've only got your API gateway. You tend mm -hmm. to think of everything as a REST problem. Um, right. What we've sort of seen is that you know behind the scenes, as that grows, as that you know get more volume, more more things going on, um, that can start to struggle. So really, um, there's a there's a, a, an inflection point, a tipping point where people realise that they need to start re re engineering, modernising the interior uh, right. of their organisation. That's that's you know, it can be a very complex thing. So you know de depending on the you know, maturity of the organisation. Um, the understanding of what event driven does, um, you know, people either sort of get it really quickly and go, this is, you know, this is different, this is new, this is something I can add into what I'm doing and, you know, and, and, and get the agility, but also get the visibility and controls while I do it. Um, and and we, we've sort of worked on a methodology over the years that, you um, we call it the snow blower. If you're from Canada, you'd know what I mean initially, but uh, they used to clear the snow off the road and they just have these things that spin around and, and pick up the snow. Um, right. that, that methodology we, we use, so it's kind of a, you know, we, you kind of iterate over the same thing over and over again, but you start with a small project, you understand, use it to prove out the technology, understand how it works, uh, understand right. how the organization needs to think a little bit differently to start thinking event driven, um, as opposed to thinking, you know, kind of SOA rest request response um style and i think when people get that where they get the idea that you know something's happened in my organization i can do things with that um that you know people when they they hit that you know that um realization point they start you know coming up with use cases about the, all the things that they could do um so yeah so it's 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 um you know it's 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 a an ex exciting time for organizations because i think although um using event driven has been around for you know, some years in some industries, um, mm -hmm. it's really just become popular in the last sort of, um, you know, three, four years beyond right. the mainstream, beyond the, um, you know, the kind of capital markets and, um, you know, 
uh, some of the, uh, you know, I think as well, the other thing in the, the core of some of the new tech startups, mm -hmm. they, they kind of designed and built their systems in a very event driven, mm -hmm. event driven way. So they built things that kind of work on streams of events. Right. Yeah. And thanks for that. Uh, thanks, uh, Phil. Uh, it was a very insightful session. So I, I, I hope you are uh, giving the permission for us to share the decks with the yep, audience. Absolutely. Uh, please do include your contact details so that uh, the, any of the, from the audience, anybody who sees it in the future can reach out to you yep. for any queries and help. Great. And I, th I think as well, I mean, in closing, we've got the Solace. Um, you can use our standard edition for free. And um, if you go to solace.com and then, you know, it's very easy to find. Um, it's, uh, you know, set up to make it easy to evaluate, play with, use. Um, so I uh, encourage you to do that also. Right. Okay. Thanks, Rob. Thanks very much. Thanks, Thank everyone. You. Our next speaker is Ariante Vidato from Dana. He'll be talking to us about 59 degree of API design to consider when crafting your API specification. 